Before we start this video, I just want to say that uh, I'm sorry it took so long to upload the second part of this video. It's just that uh, after I'd finished the first part, uh, I piled on so much polish. I really wanted to get that real thick piano finish. Um, so uh, so it's taken a good uh, 12 days to dry hard enough to be able to burnish it and finish it off. So let's get back into the video. Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of polishing our Riga plinth. Um, we've, as you can see now, we denibbed it back in the last, the end of the last video. Uh, and now we're going to start giving it some more polish. Now, basically, now I'm, I want to get this, the intensity of this colour really nice and deep. So where I was using the plum mahogany before, I am now switching to new rosewood, uh, light fast stain. These are all by Morels. This is all professional finishes. Um, you can buy this off of eBay. There are companies on there that, that sell it on eBay. So, um, but I get mine direct from Morels. I'm a part of the trade in the trade. So, um, I'm nearly running out actually. So I'm gonna have to get some more. I usually buy it in five liters, but because of the lockdown, um, they, they, they've uh, they've stopped delivering. So I had to get this one off of eBay because they they furloughed their staff and shut down for a bit. So there we go. So basically we're going to add a bit of the stain, the light fast stain to the polish. These are both spirit based, so they mix together well. Okay, as I say, if you get a bit of stripey effect on this, um, because it, that's the sort of look I'm looking for, it doesn't matter. If I'm building up, uh, say, a plain piece of wood, I have to be very careful and do it gradually, really slowly, because otherwise you'll get stripes across the surface and you won't want that. It'll look terrible if you're not after a stripey effect so um so basically there you go that, that that's that's going to give me a, a nice deep deeper red color um <clears throat> so we've got our piece of uh, stocking net here and uh this is our is that the fabric no that they they send me two lots they send me a whole bag of uh, white rags but for some reason i get one that i don't really like the feel of so I don't use that one. Uh, and this one here is the one because I can tell it's got a stri slight stripe in the uh, in in the uh, fabric. These are just old hospital sheets. They get sold to Morels and then they reuse them. And right, anyway, I won't stop going on. I'll stop going on. Sorry. Uh, right, here we go. So. Although that looks very similar to the other colour, it, it is more of a deeper, it should give us more of a deeper red finish, which is what I'm looking for. This is just my own taste, obviously. Right. Okay, so we're going to start again over here. We're going to work our way over. And the more coats we give it, what what tends to happen is the uh, the stripes will basically fade back very slightly. Um, that's what we're looking for, so it, it gives us a natural feel to it, like it is real. So there we go, that's one coat on there, on the top. Now we're just going to flip to the sides, and then uh, and then we're going to uh, I'm going to carry on building this up because uh, you can't watch me do every single part of it. It would just take too long, and and I'm not really interested in speeding the video up, as I said in the last video. So we're just going to go along here. Same with that side there. And what I'll do is I'll get on with doing some other stuff. I've got some chairs to glue up while I'm doing this, so I'm going to crack on with those. There we go. Right, okay. So that's one coat. Uh, I'm going to carry on building it up. We're going to get a really nice, deep, rich colour, which you'll, you'll see. So uh, I'll see you in a bit. Hello guys, so we've been uh, building up uh, lots and lots of coats now. I've totally uh, forgotten how many coats I've put on this. It's just going to be endless. So I'm trying to get this. I mean, if you uh, see some of those really high-end BMW speakers, BMW, uh, they are severely glossy. You've seen them. They give them so many coats of lacquer, and, and then they polish them and polish them, and you, you've got a perfect, especially those big curved floor stand as you see um, with the uh, big tweeter that comes out the top of them um, I can do a finish like that uh, and I'm going to get this to that sort of state once it's done it's going to look like 
that whether I'm going to finish it glossy or a satin finish, I'm not sure yet. Um, even my satin finish tends to be slightly uh, shiny anyway. So, but um, what I'm going to show you now is so uh, I've gone back onto the clear polish. We've achieved the the colour that I, I want, uh, and now I'm going to start showing you how I, I I do the final finishing on this. So we're going to do. A, <clears throat> I've been building this up. We're going to do a few more coats tonight. And then um, leave it overnight to dry. In fact, I've, uh, I've I've got some work tomorrow, so I'm off doing that. So I'll probably uh, tomorrow evening come back, dean a bit back again and build up more coats. So basically, where you saw me doing straight, pulling the rubber straight across the wood all the time, uh, across the plinth, I am now going to be showing you another method. And the reason I do this is because, um, yeah, see, look, you get little bits of dust in the atmosphere. You see, that's the that's the thing with traditional polishing. Um, you really need to do it in a really, uh, you know, dust-free environment. And because this uh, studio of mine's in a bit of a mess at the moment, but it'll be fine. It will come up fine anyway. So <clears throat> we've loaded our rubber back up with polish. <clears throat> now we're, at, at, we're 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 putting less polish on. Um, but it's finer. So what we do now is we take our rubber and we work in circles with it. You see? Uh, and you're getting an ultra fine coat gown over the top of this. And basically what this is doing is it's flattening back the surface at the same time and making it smooth because I'm pushing the, the rubber around. Now with traditional uh, button polish or garnet polish, you probably have no idea what I'm on about. You may well do. Um, <clears throat> you would use an oil on the bottom of it. So basically you'd put a little bit of oil, um, white oil, or, or purified uh, linseed oil, just on the bottom. Not normal linseed oil, because it's too thick and gloopy. So you'd just put a dab of it on there. And what it does is it makes the, the rubber, which this is called, uh, glide across the surface easier. But with, with uh, traditional polishing, I'm getting a, bit, um, getting a bit ahead of myself now. With traditional polishing... Uh, because it's uh, uh, <clears throat> spirit based, you, you get a chemical bond, which means every time you go over again, it burns into the last coat. So you haven't got to keep denibbing it. The only reason I keep denibbing it is because with uh, traditional polishing, you get bits of dust and imperfections out the uh, air that stick in it. And you get bits off of the cloth as well. So um, anyway, enough about that. So we're just going to, we're going to just wipe with the sides. We're just going with the grain again. Or with the, uh, the, well, it's not really the grain on this, uh, on, on the, well, it is a sort of grain on plywood. But we're just going to carry on just going around the plywood uh, with straight motions. We're not going to worry about doing circles on the sides. It, it's, it's irrelevant on there. The reason we're doing it on the top again, as I say, is uh, because we're, we're flattening it back. We're flattening the finish as we go along because... When I did the second zebra effect on there, uh, I made sure that I put it on nice and thick. So it's got, it, it's almost come, uh, very, I find it very hard to explain this, uh, but it um, it protrudes the surface slightly. So by spinning it in circles, what I'm doing is I'm building the polish over and pushing it down and flattening the surface at the same time. I mean, I've been doing this job for uh, since 1988. So uh, what I don't know about this isn't worth knowing, to be honest with you. Right. <clears throat> I've, I've, I've loaded the rubber up again and working in very tight circles. So you're overlapping at each circle. You're coming around. And what you're basically doing, if you was doing a piece of mahogany that has got a grain in it or some oak, or walnut or anything, any any wood that's got a, a sort of grain in it. I mean, oak has got a fairly uh, heavy grain, and, and like ash and elm. Uh, while you're spinning the rubber around, what you're doing is you're forcing the polish into the grain. So you're grain filling it almost. But with oak, say oak, uh, you'd need to use a grain filler on there. So you'd use like a, uh, like a, a water-based uh, stopper. Um, which is uh, it's, it, it, it's a filler basically, and you'd fill the surface with it, uh, and then you'd flat it back or you'd sand it so you're leaving the filler in the grain. And when you build up polish, you've got less uh, polish that has to go in to fill the grain up. Now, another way of doing it is you'd build up loads of layers of polish, really thick, 
you leave it to dry uh, a few days flat it right back so it goes right back and you'll fill in the grain with polish but it takes ages that way so you find a lot of people they like to um fill the grain first but uh, with this there is no grain it was a fairly flat piece of uh of uh, ply so i'm not entirely sure what the wood was on the top um, whether it's uh i don't think it's a soft wood because uh, i did google it and it's it said uh several i think it might be actually uh uh, uh birch but it doesn't the grain doesn't look like birch to me but it, it, it's irrelevant anyway so so we're just going to keep going over again and fill it up like this so i'm going to get to the stage tonight where i'm going to leave it again and then i'm going to come back tomorrow evening and probably do some more finishing on it and hopefully it will be ready then to do the final uh, buff up on it anyway that's that for today so uh i'll see you tomorrow right okay um we've left this uh again this is uh i've already started uh denibbing it all back uh, and this is the the, the the last bit of the top here so um we're just working in circles with the uh denibbing now so just just a flat we really want to flat it back nice and uh hard and then after this we're going to be putting on the top coats and then once the top coats have all gone on and, and it's finished uh, we're going to leave it for a couple of days and then i'll show, uh, show you how we get that real luster on it so i'm going to do this in a high gloss finish i've decided uh, i was debating on the satin finish but i thought i'll go for the high gloss because it it'll just make it look more stunning anyway so um so i'm just rubbing it So we're putting clear coats on again now. So that's about it now for that. I'll just check on the profile. If you look on the profile of it, you can see where bits you've missed. So you just keep going over. This has had so many coats now. It's, uh, I'm not sure how many again, like I said earlier on. I think I'm just gone, gone mad on it. Right. Okay, so we need to wipe it over now with some baby wipes to get all the dust off again. You can see how nice that looks just by wetting it. We want a really nice smooth finish on this nice... Uh... Right there. What I'm going to do is dry it off with a piece of uh, cloth now. There we go. All around the sides. I'm going to be making a tweaker man badge for this as well. <laughs> One of my badges that I make. Uh, I'm going to do it out of a piece of uh, brass and. Uh, I won't show you how to do that, it's uh, a bit laborious, but I'm going to do a tweaker man badge on it. Right, so we got it to that stage now. So now all we need to do now is we need another piece of uh, cloth here. So we'll rip that up, put that on there for a bit. We get our special power polish again, which we're running out of. We've got to order some more. Um, put it into our pot here. Mix some meths in it again now. Um, as we start doing the uh, the finishing on this, we increase the intensity of meths that's in the polish. So um, we put so it goes on super fine because we we don't want we want uh, to uh, make sure there's no tram lines in it. So tram lines is where the rubber goes up and down, and when you look on the profile, you can see very faint lines as the the rubber's gone over the surface so as you um water down the the polish you uh the, the the tram lines tend to disappear they they dissolve almost as you'll keep going over and over and over it again with um and what you're doing is you're not putting it on really wet it's it's almost quite dry as you're putting it on it isn't but it it, it appears to be more dry than it would be so um so now I've got another piece of cloth here. 
Uh, we dip that in the polish. Uh, where's our piece of cloth on here? <clears throat> we wrap it around. Now what we're going to do is squeeze it out. Make sure there's not too much in there because this is uh, <clears throat> this is all the fine stuff. Now we're going to work in circles again for now. And then we're going to do, uh, you know, we do a, a couple of coats. I'll show you again how to do a couple of coats and then we're going to... Uh, I'll just crack on with it myself and then you can see it once I've uh, once I've uh, done it and finished it. I'll show you how to do it straight again. All right, okay, so we're just spinning it again. Right, brilliant. So now we'll just dip that in there and then we're going to do is just wipe the edges down, the sides and that. There is a bit of rubbish on there that I need to clear away. <coughs> That's it. Over there. So I'm probably going to build up a, probably another 30 coats on this now. Um, and then that will be it. I'm going to do probably 20 spinning it in circles uh, and then I'm going to finish off with straight strokes across the surface so um, we'll do one more coat and then uh, then I'll leave it for me to um, to carry on polishing and then I'll show you what it looks like when I've uh, finished it There we go. So uh, I'll be back uh, a bit later once I've uh, built the, 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 the final coats up and then you'll be able to see a really nice luster on it. Right guys, we're nearly over. This is, I say over, this is nearly finished. In a sense, the build up, the build up of the polish. So um, basically I'm just doing the last few coats on it. So uh, we've got our rubber there, going up and down the grain. We've got a really nice deep shine on this now. Um, this isn't the final stage. The uh, final stage is to leave it for a couple of days to really harden off. And then we denib it back with some ultra fine um, paper. And then we wire wool it over. And then we'll finish it off with a rubbing compound to give us that uh, pristine high gloss finish. I mean this will look stunning after once it's done. I mean this has had now so many coats. It's unbelievable um, And the idea of denibbing it over is because you still get slight imperfections in the in the air You get bits of dust that settle in it. It's very difficult unless you're doing it in a uh, uh, a Spray booth or something that's like a clean room where you've got nothing else going into it It doesn't matter because uh, you get rid of it in the flatting process So there we go. What a finish! It looks really, really nice now. It's got a real nice luster to it. Look, you can see your hand in it. Look, it's uh, this is like uh, I mean, when I finish this, this will be like a, a highly polished Porsche car. That's the sort of finish I've done on this. It's going to look stunning. So, um, so we'll leave this now to dry for a, for a couple of days and then we'll be back and we'll do the finish. You know, I'll show you how to denib it back and to buff it up into that high gloss finish. And we'll be finishing it off in some car wax because the car wax generally uh, gives it a really nice deep shine. So, OK, I'll see you soon. Right, OK, so we've had some goodies through the post today um, for the turntable. Let's open it up and see what's what's arrived. Um, I've ordered a few bits, so uh, I'm not entirely sure what this is. I have, I might have a little slight feeling that it's uh, maybe the gasket for the motor, um, Zorbafane gasket. Yeah. There you go. I think this is the the gasket. Uh, so we open that up. Oh, it just slides open this side. Oh, it's got like a, a seal over that bit there. So we just snip that with the. 
can I pull that off? There we go. Ah, oh, that's it. There it is. Yeah, there's a gasket. <clears throat> Three mil Zorbafane gasket. So what this effectively is going to do is to uh, help to stop any vibration coming up onto the plinth and affecting the uh, the the cartridge. Any any uh, noise from the the motor. So this is going to be brilliant. So the motor just goes through there, and then that bolts on the underneath of this hole there, which I've got to drill a couple of holes in yet. Um, so we'll get around to doing that. Uh, and these are the screws as well that bolt the motor down. So they give us a nice couple of screws with it. I think I paid uh, fourteen ninety nine for this. So it's it's, uh, it's it's not too bad. So that's that. So uh, yes. So we'll be back uh, and we'll be showing you how to do the finishing. So right, okay. This is uh, dried for around about twelve days now. So basically what we've done is we, I've already burnished up the sides. So we're just going to finish off the top to show you. So look, if you look up here on the profile, you can see that is a piano finish. That's like glass. It's absolutely stunning. Um, this, this film probably doesn't give it justice, actually, to see how, how great it is. You can really, you know, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. So let's get into the top part now. So basically... What we need to do this job now, to finish this off, is a series of wet and dry papers. So basically, um, I've got some 400, which is quite coarse in a way for, for to start with. So uh, we've got some 400 there. Then we're going to nip up to 800. And then we're going to go to 1200. Um, basically, then we're going to start finishing it off. Now, this is... Um, I've been doing this a hell of a long time, so... Um, we're going to start off after that with this cream cleaner okay on the surface so basically what we're doing is we're gradually buffing it up and then we're going to be heading over to some after that to some uh, metallic teacup and then we're going to be finishing it off in some turtle wax magic color which is uh, just uh, an enriched enhanced uh, uh, car car wax so let's get into it and we also need a little bowl here with some uh, uh, water with a bit of um, uh, washing up liquid in it just to uh, make the uh, the wet and dry run smoothly and we're also going to need a cloth as well now I've got a, a buffer wheel here also on a drill and another uh, lambs wool polishing mop at the end of it um, I generally do a lot of my burnishing I call it burnishing which is the end part of it uh, without any, um, without using a drill, but we're going to show you how to use a drill on it anyway. Um, it sort of speeds it up. Sometimes it doesn't on small things. So basically, what we're going to do now is just going to work this in circles on the surface. All it's basically doing is when you do uh, polishing, you can sometimes get very faint tram lines where you've stroked the, the French polishing rubber over the surface so all this is doing is just basically um cutting that back and and the reason i've done this as well with um we uh, is because i've piled on so much polish i really wanted that really thick look to it like a like almost like a plastic over the top of it but um you know a smooth or i should say more like a glass finish really so, um, and what we have to do is we're just going to work through the grades of, of the papers just to, just to take off the, uh, the very uh, fine part of the top surface. Right, okay, uh, we're coming to the end of the uh, 400. So... Just make sure that we've we've uh, flattened it all back with 400 all thoroughly. Now it's going to wipe it over with our cloth just to clean all that off. Because basically all, all this is doing is um, where you saw me uh, cutting back between coats in the previous video, I was using a grey lubricil paper. And what happens is, is it flowers up, but that's not fine enough to what we need to do on this now. So... Um, so there's a couple of bits there that, I, that, that you can't tell when the water's on the surface that I've missed slightly. So you just keep going over again until you cut all those bits back. 
because you want this to be totally flat and smooth. Um, bit more water on there. You need to keep it well lubricated. Right. Okay. I think that's probably that for the uh, for the four hundred. Now we're going to move up now to uh, some eight hundred. So basically what you're doing is you're basically cutting out the 400 with the 800 the scratches that it leaves in there and the gradually going up finer and finer so we're going to soak that in there again right okay working it in circles always work in circles because don't forget this is a a piano finish it's not um you don't have to go with the grain on this because we're going to be buffing it up to a mirror finish Right, okay, we're uh, coming to the end of our flat back with the uh, 800, wet and dry it. Right, so let's clean that off now. See now we've gradually dulled it, it's gradually dulling down. So it's just, that's it's really smooth now already. So we've got a lovely smooth finish going on there. Um, now we're going to work our way up to 1200 now. Um, same thing again. Now I have finished some dashboards in cars before. Um, did a couple of um, Rolls Royces, uh, a Bentley. Uh, I've done a... Uh, a friend of mine was into uh, old escorts, so he had a, a Mark I Mexico from the early 70s. And I, I actually made the dashboard for that one in there. Um, it looks stunning in there, it did. But in a car, you've really got to make sure that there's a hell of a lot of heat in cars. So you have to use the right lacquer, and it has to be uh, totally heat resistant, because um, this, this lacquer that I put on here, it... Well, th th this is heat resistant, but not to the extent what, you, what it would be in a car. It gets red hot, so it would probably bubble up in there. And it would be all right if you, say, left it for quite a few months before you put it in there, and it would have to be really gone off hard before you could uh, expose it to that level of heat. But So what they tend to use in a car would be a polyester lacquer, where this, where this is just a, a heat resistant French polish that I put on here. Okay, we're getting there slowly now. Right, so we're coming to the end of the 1200 now. I think it's all totally smooth under there now. So we're going to dry it off now, and then we're going to start using some compound on it to uh, bring it up to uh, a more of a mirror finish. I mean, these videos, they never... When you film stuff like this, so you could never get the angle. I'm, I'm only using a mobile phone to record this as well. So you can, if you had a really decent high-end camera, I did buy a camera, but it, it really weren't that great in the end. So I decided to uh, go back to the, 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 the phone. In fact, I've got a new phone coming, which has got a lot better camera on it. So anyway, so that's that. Right, okay, you can use a rubbing compound, the car rubbing compound. This works really well, and it's as cheap as chips to buy. All it is is like GIF. Uh, so basically, we're going to just be putting some on the surface initially. Um, we're going to rub it in with a, with a cloth to start with, just to get it... We're going to spread it all around like that. And then we'll use a drill just to give it a bit of, we'll put a bit of water on it just to make it a bit more pliable because otherwise it sort of dries off quite quickly. And this is a very fine abrasive. Um, it's obviously not as fine as tea cut or, or a um, rubbing compound that you use to buff up car bodies uh, like tea cut uh, come in different grades. So you can get a more coarser one and then a, a more, what do you call it, a, a more finer one. So we're just going to, 
So this is a foam pad on the end of there. So we're just going to bust that up and down like that. You can get a proper buffer, which I'm going to get for the, for the compressor. Now this has a tendency of coming off sometimes, so I have to be careful just to make sure that it don't pop off, otherwise it's going to land up in the surface of the polish and put a big dent in it, so... Increase the speed of it. That's better. Well, as you can see now, it's already started to uh, shine slightly in areas. Uh, I'm going to cut a bit, bit more cloth here. We we'll just use this mutton cloth. It's just uh, stocking out, I call this. But um, so now it's uh, it's gone slightly more shiny. It's still yeah, it's still dull at the moment. So basically, I'm going to finish this off now with by hand. Um, rubbing this in with some more uh, GIF on it, so I'll be back in a second once I've buffed it up So we're working this in circles the uh, cream cleaner Now I've uh, In my job which are you you're put obviously guessing what I do, but I'm gonna do a video on it and I've uh, I'm in the process of just finishing setting up this studio. I've been doing a few bits already, uh, which I'll show you in, in a video. Uh, I'll reveal what I do and everything else. And uh, um, I've uh, worked for a lot of famous people in my time. And I've even, well, one of my biggest claims to fame is I uh, French polished one of Elton John's pianos. And I'm gonna do a separate video on that altogether because it's quite interesting. Um, it's when he was very, just as he was becoming famous, and uh, anyway, I'll uh, I'll reveal that in another video. So, right, okay. So now we've we've really it takes a lot of work in this. Does it really takes a lot out of your arms? Um, if you've ever hand waxed a car or tea cutted a car and then hand waxed it afterwards, you'll know. I mean, that's even harder because it's a bigger surface than this one. So. There we go. So we're going to wipe that off again now. Also, I've been uh, I've been trying to get other YouTubers to do some videos on some of my cables. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, I hopefully they'll link me in it, and then I'll be able to link it in my video as well. Um, right. So we're getting closer now. So if you look through there, if you look now, it's already started to pick up a more of a sheen. It's still slightly scratchy looking, and that's how it will be at this stage. Right, so next we're going to be moving on to the teacup. And then I'm going to put this uh, lamb's wool disc, uh, buffing disc onto the drill. Right, okay, we've got our... Uh, ultra fine buffing wool on there now which we're going to use to, uh, to do the final finishing right okay so what we need to do now is we need now to use our metallic tea cut on this now this is like a greeny color this metallic tea cut the reason why i'm using metallic tea cut and not normal tea cut is because this is more of a, a, a what you would class as a clear lacquer in a way that's on this so um the heat resistant special power polish that i use to polish it in right okay we're just working the uh the teacup 
in on the surface. Now I'm just going to use the drill to uh, give it a buff up. Right, okay, we're going to leave that like that now, and then we're going to finish it off now, just by hand. Because you want to start, um, I'll get it so far, then you, I'll show you it, and then basically I'll finish it off and then come back and show you what it is, because it takes a while, and these videos really drag out, so... Um, Oops. Oh. Really got to put some pressure on it, really give it to get that real high gloss piano finish. You've really got to work it right. Let's just buff that off of there for a minute now. Another piece of cloth here. I'll just show you how it's going. There you go, it's getting there, it's getting there slowly. So it is time consuming, it takes a while, but uh, if you want a lovely finish, um, you know, it will take a while. So I'm going to finish cutting it back with a tea cut and then we'll come back and you'll see the uh, me waxing it with a turtle wax right at the end. So we're, uh, we're nearly finished the tea cut. I've been buffing this now for a good half an hour at the top. Um, lots of pressure on the cloth, working it in circles and then straight lines and uh, all different directions just to really give it, get this really nice deep lustre. Alright, okay. Now I think we're going to start just to buff that off the surface now and then apply the wax. Now you can see, look at that. It's like a mirror. Oh, that, is a, that is a stunning finish, that is. Right, that's looking great. Now, that's not that's not finished yet. It's going to go more shiny than that. Um, so now, we're going to apply our wax. So I need a couple of bits of wood just to slide under. A plinth to elevate it slightly. Right, okay, push that under there. That there, right. Right, so we're going to use a new piece of cloth to apply the wax. And we're going to do the same thing again, work it in circles. Um, this tends to be quite liquidy, this wax, for some reason. This particular one. There we go. This comes in different colours. So I'm using this colour because I've got a load of this anyway. Um, whoops, watch out you don't get it everywhere, right okay, so I really want to work this in as well, exactly the same as the teacup, okay you can build up um, layers of this again as well, you just put it on, buff it off and then keep building it, um, I'll just, I'm going to just build it quickly to show you what it looks like, and then uh, I can carry on polishing it myself later on. Um, and then what we're going to do in another video is we're going to fit this up uh, with the arm on it and the, the platter. Um, I did see a Delrin platter on eBay. Someone was selling it uh, second hand. Uh, I was tempted on it. Then I started doing some research on it. And because uh, I like my music very detailed, um, the Delrin platter was going to give you extra warmth but take away some of the detail opposed to the um, the acrylic platter that I'm using. So I've decided just to keep the acrylic platter 
Um, I'm going to do some other upgrades as we go along. Um, and obviously the underneath of this hasn't been finished still. It's still in the rear wood. So what I'm doing underneath is I, I'm going to put some leather under there. So I'm going to cut some leather out and I'm going to glue it under there. Um, just with PVA glue on the leather underneath it. And because I want that nice soft feel when I touch the button underneath it and and um and that'll look really stylish. And then obviously we have got no feet made for this yet. Um so that's another video we're gonna do. We're gonna show you the feet. Right, okay, let's just get some more. This is um this takes a while still, so uh we'll uh I'm gonna just wax the sides and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, okay, so we're uh, coming to the end now. I'm just going to leave that to dry for a second because what you do is leave it to dry into a haze and then we will vigorously buff it up with a nice new piece of cloth. Right, okay. So while we leave that to dry, I want to show you something that I've made. Um, this is a very classy. <laughs> it's a tweaker man badge for the front. So we're going to be gluing that down here. Um, it's slight, quite thick at the moment, so I'm going to shave it down on the lid issue and make it slightly thinner. Um, managed to hand paint the, the my logo on there, the TM, and that will just go in the corner there, and that will be our our plinth. Right, okay, so we're buffing this up now. We're just finishing. This is the uh, the final part. All the sides, get all the sides nice and buffed up. Uh, right, there you go, guys. That is stunning. Now, I doubt you could get anybody to polish that better than I've done that. This is the pinnacle. This is absolutely stunning. It's like just like pure glass over. And the effect, the uh, zebra wood effect now, it generally looks like real grain. And I'm not just saying that, uh, it really does. It's so effective. It's, it's just, it's really, really well. So, um, no, I'm really pleased with that. We've got a lovely luster on that. Look at that. It's like glass. There you go. Right, brilliant. So that's that. So we've uh, we've had some uh, more goodies turn up through the post for the uh, for this project. So we're just going to open them up and see what we've got in here. Um, rip the top off of there. Okay. So what is this in here? Let's see what this is. Ah, this looks like the switch. I had to order a new switch. Uh, tried to get one from Arcam. They no longer do it. So I spoke to my uh, hi-fi shop and he told me what one to get. So just a switch and that's going to fit underneath. Um, I don't want to put it on that wood now. Uh, just move those over. Uh, that's just going to slot into there like so. It's perfect right size for it. So this is going to be covered in leather. Some dark brown leather. Might at the corners. Um, when I cut the leather, I chamfer the edge slightly on it when I'm cutting it with a, a scalpel knife. So then it just blends in and you don't see any of the edge of the leather. So that's that. Right, okay. So that's that one. And let's see what, what other goodies there's arrived here. I have a feeling I know what this is as well, but let's just pop this open and have a quick look. Um, so I've got the, the new motors to go on there. And uh, what have we got in here? This is a very good company on eBay that I use. Analog Seduction. Uh, they do it's put, they do loads of stuff, loads of Riga bits and all that. So this is the uh, motor pulley there. Um, this will fit in the top of the uh, of the motor. Once we mount the motor, then we'll we, we'll get to fit that on again. <clears throat> and we just glue that on with a bit of arrow dye, a bit of epoxy resin. Um, they don't tend to come with any little screws. So uh, I've just been advised that that was what I've done before with the other one, and that'll just sit in the top there like that on the top there and it will just you know we'll get the um it's funny because this one here looks slightly the body of that part looks slightly bigger than the other one but never mind that that'll go that'll go on the top of there 
Um, and we've got obviously screw our motor in with our gasket that we got as well. So I think that's it for the uh, this video now. So uh, all there is to say again is uh, I hope you really enjoyed this video and you, you love the finish that I've achieved on this. Um, so thanks for watching another Tweak Command video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like, please. Thank you.